Grace and peace multiply to you and yours and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High. Happy Sabbath day, everyone. And thank God it's a blessing to wake up and see another day. You know what I'm saying? Truly it is. Now, this is part three. To who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Don't think my hands dirty. That comes from years. Those are calluses. Those come from years of dunking all the time, <laughs> back in my young and dumb days. But anyway, <laughs> um, now I showed you before in the lesson, part two, that of the different ideologies of man's religion. Because when you read the Bible, there is no religion. It's just man puts his own twist or spin on things. Just like I pointed out that Muhammad created Islam, right? But he got his doctrine from Judaism. And those that follow Judaism got their doctrine from the Bible. See? See? Just like Christianity. Everybody want to pick and choose what they want to do out the Bible. But anyway, before I move on, let me show you something. It's a blessing to wake up. We, we woke up to see you another day, right? You see this young boy here? He don't have that chance no more. This young boy, eight years old, the other day committed suicide because of bullying. Bullying. What are they teaching these kids in these schools? <laughs> you know, what are they teaching these kids in their homes? You know, and then not only that, what, uh, uh, about a month ago or so, this 11-year-old boy committed suicide. That shows and proves ain't nobody teaching they children the word of God. Ain't no teach ain't nobody teaching to keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. We gotta wake up. It's a lot of sleepwalkers out here. Now let's get back to the Bible. It's not that long. I'm gonna finish it up though. Turn to the New Testament, Luke chapter one. And this is talking about Jesus when he was born. Luke chapter one, beginning with verse thirty one. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, the Son of the Most High God. <laughs> and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, because David was the king of the tribe of Judah. Jesus came through that seed. It, that's why it baffles me that so many of my Hebrew brothers want to claim the tribe of Judah, but <laughs> but don't but don't want to but don't believe in Jesus. But that's just how your brother the Edomites are. <laughs> they supposed to be the, they supposed to be the true people of God, but they don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> you know, so many lies out there. Like 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 another lie that, that my brothers my Hebrew brothers uh perpetuate. You know, they they say you know, when you read the uh, Genesis forty nine. Talk about 12 tribes, Jacob's 12 sons, and say one of them was living by the water. So you supposed to be from out of that tribe. I'm from Chicago. I lived by Lake Michigan many years. What tribe that's supposed to make me out of? Don't nobody know what tribe you out of until the Lord return. So wake up. Now. Verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Verse 34, then Mary said unto the angel, no, 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 no. Go over to chapter 2, Luke 2, Luke chapter 2, and I'm going to pick it up at verse 22. And when he came out, he could, whoa, that's one, Luke chapter 2, verse 22. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem, Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. It's a beautiful thing. Verse 24, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Verse 25, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Oh, Simeon mean black. <laughs> and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. 
and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So this man wasn't going to die until he saw Jesus with his own eyes. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Whoa. He took Jesus up in his arms and blessed God. That's right. It's two in the Godhead, the Father and the Son. He said, verse 29, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. That's right. Jesus is the Savior. Verse 31, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. That's right. Salvation is of the true Jews. You know, but the Lord had a plan for the Gentiles as well. And anybody that that turned to him to get salvation. You can read that in the Old Testament. But peep game though. Verse 33. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. That's right. You know why? Because a lot of physical Israel don't keep God's laws. <laughs> you know? A lot of physical Israel that do keep the law kick against Jesus. <laughs> Gonna be a sad day. And it said, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Thousands after, thousand years after Jesus came in the flesh. He still spoken against. Ain't that something? Woe unto them. Now. Verse 35. Yea. A sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. That the hearts. That the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. That's right. And it's being revealed today. A lot of people. People say they, name, say they love the Lord. But they ain't doing what the Lord said do. That's hypocrisy. Now, now let's go to uh, John chapter 20. Stay in the New Testament. John chapter 20, verse, just one verse here, verse 29. And this is one of his, his one of Jesus' disciples was unbelieving after Jesus was resurrected. But Jesus don't, you know. Jesus told him, put your hand in my side, and then he believed. Repeat game. John 20, verse 29. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. That's for us. We weren't living in Jesus' times. But that's why Jesus says, search the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life, that they are there that testify of me. This whole book is about him. He allowed it to survive the evil wickedness through the world for us to be edified about him. And once you learn about Jesus, the real Jesus of this Bible, you know, then you know what you got to do. And speaking of the real Jesus of this Bible, let me show you something else. You see that? Now that's a statue of a black Jesus on a cross. And where is this at? In Vatican City. <laughs> so the Pope bowing down to a black Jesus, but he ain't going to put that image in front of you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, see what I mean about the hypocrisy in the world? The evil wickedness in the world? They know that Jesus was black. Just like everybody else. But they want to perpetuate a lie. Now, go back to look, go back a couple of uh, chapters. John chapter 18. John chapter 18, verse 36, 37, and 38. Verse 36. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then will my servants fight 
that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Out thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. That's right. <laughs> and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Verse 38. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. That's right. Jesus had no sin. He didn't do no wrong. But the people, they look like me, they look like you, still wanted to kill him. Ain't that a shame? Now, now let's go, let's go to uh, Old Testament. Because Jesus quoted Old Testament scripture right here. Might be worded differently, but this is what happened. Psalm chapter 110. And I'm going to start with verse 1. Psalm chapter 110. And verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Whoa, hold up. Don't that sound like two? The Lord said unto my Lord, His Father and the Son, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. That's right. We got a lot of Israelites today. They willing to fight. They ain't ready. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. That means he don't never get old. He is eternal. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Verse 4, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Verse 5, the Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. That's right. You read that in Jeremiah 25. <laughs> Say the slain of the Lord are going to be from one end of the earth to the other. Verse 6, he shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. Verse 7, he shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore, he shall lift up the head. Mm. Now, Go to Hebrews. Go back to New Testament. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10. And pick it up at verse 11. Hebrews 10. Verse 11. 11 through 13. Just a few verses. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. It's talking about sacrificial law because when Jesus died, no more Levitical priesthood coming to bring, offer them sacrifice. That's why we have a new, better covenant. You know, a lot of my Old Testament scriptures, uh, Old Testament brothers don't want to see it. They still sleepwalking. <laughs> Verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, that's Jesus. He died, he came to die for us once. He ain't coming back to die again. To the wicked, he gonna come and do a lot of killing. So you might as well get on the right side of the Lord now, for it's too late. Sat down on the right hand of God. That's where he is now, making intercession for us, because he is the only one that came in the flesh. The determining counsel just had to be the father or the son to come to die for the sins of man. But he had to come through the form of a man to die because spiritual beings don't die. Now, verse 13. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Didn't I just read that? In the book of Psalms 110 and in the New Testament with Jesus' words? Hmm. 
Because when he come back, his enemy's going to be made as supposed to do, whether you like it or not. Now, uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Go back to the Old Testament. Proverbs chapter 3. And one verse here. Verse 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Mm. Let, let me read verse 1 right quick. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Whoa! He <laughs> said, let mine heart, let thine heart keep my commandments. Mm. Old Testamenters, wake up. You don't need no fringes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it says, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Not on your clothes. You know? Okay, if, 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 if you want to be stuck on fringes, what if your house burned down to the ground and all your, all your clothes that have fringes on them is gone? What you going to do? You going to start breaking the God's law? No, you know the law. <laughs> anyway, that's another lesson. Now, go to Hebrews 8. Go to the New Testament. Hebrews 8. I, saw, I was walking through Walmart yesterday. <laughs> before, you know, some hours before the Sabbath kicked in. And uh, seeing some brothers from another camp with their friends on passing out. They love flyers in, inside the stove. They looked at me. They kept on going. <laughs> I'm like, why? Why didn't you give me one, bro? I want to see what you. I want to see what you're talking about. You know, but I had one already. I, I, I well, I have, I had one from uh, some year, a few years back. You know, but uh, man. I'm like, you supposed to be spreading the truth. Why don't you why don't you talk to me? <laughs> yeah, that's another lesson. But um, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1. Now the things which we have spoken, this is the song. We are such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty of the majesty in heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Verse 3, for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. But we are the priest nation. The Levitical priesthood is over with. We have a high priest now, which is Jesus. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man, that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Verse 6, But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. But, the thing is, the Lord, the Lord didn't have a problem with the old covenant. And I'm going to show you that he had a problem with the people because the people kept breaking his covenant, even today. Verse 7, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Verse 8, for finding fault with them, whoa, finding fault with them, not the covenant. See, he found, he found fault with the people. Because the people kept on disobeying. Ain't nothing changed. People kept on doing what they wanted to do. Verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant. See? See what I'm saying? <laughs> they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, said the Lord. Verse 10. 
For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Ain't that simple? Ain't that clear? Crystal clear. Wake up. Verse 11. And they shall not teach you every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Verse 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Mm. Now, but you got to get baptized. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to walk in newness of life. You got to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. Get baptized and renew your mind. But uh, now, let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. And two verses, 37 and 38. Verse 37. This is that Moses was said unto the children of Israel. A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. Verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Whoa! The church in the wilderness? That's right. A lot of people, a lot of New Testaments think that the first church started in the book of Acts. No. If you read the book of Acts, it will tell you that the first church started way back in the days of Moses and them. This is he that was in the church in the will. That's why he said, Moses said, he called it the tabernacle of the congregation when he pitched, pitched the tent outside the camp. Because the Lord said he ain't gonna be, he ain't gonna be dwelling among y'all because they kept, kept disobeying. Kept doing their own thing. Kept being disobedient. He said, <laughs> Lord is merciful, boy. Now, nah, uh, Okay, he said, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give to us. That's why we got the oracles. A lot of Gentiles, they don't have the oracles. And I mean many. They know who we are. They don't want to listen to us. And if they do listen, well, I, well I, I, let me take that back. Because most Gentiles will listen. But they're going to still do their own doctrine and commandments of man. <laughs> you know, until they get some revelation. You know, it, 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 it's only in the, in the Father's hands. If the Father decides to draw them, then they can come into this thing. But if not, I feel for them. Because Gentiles do not want to. They, they, that's why you have white supremacy in the world. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of them use it through religion. <laughs> you know, but we are the priest nation. That's why you got, that's why you got a, a, a Gentile white Pope praying to a black Jesus. You know, because he know the truth. He know who we are. But, man. Gonna continue living lives. Somebody, so it's, it's, it's a fallen angel uh, influencing him. You gotta watch him. Now, um, that was Acts seven. Okay, Matthew nineteen. Matthew chapter nineteen, and you can also read this in Luke twenty-two, verse thirty. But this one verse here, Matthew nineteen and verse twenty-eight. This is Jesus talking. Peep game on what he tell him. Matthew 19, verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon, sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Ain't that a beautiful thing? Man, can't wait to see that day. Now, go uh, go to go to First Corinthians, First Corinthians six, 
1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 2 and 3. First Corinthians 6, verse 2. Do you know, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Whoa! We're going to judge the world? Uh, we're going to judge the 12 tribes of Israel? And we're going to judge the world? Ain't that a blessing? Don't you want to be in the God in God's kingdom? You gotta keep start keeping the commandments. And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Verse three. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Whoa. See, this is why this is one of the reasons why Satan got kicked out of heaven, because he didn't want to submit to man's authority. Because we were given dominion over this whole planet, over all God's creation. We were supposed to have the dominion. But Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve disobeyed. So, you know, we had to go through some things. God had to do some things to set, set everything right in order. So when he returned, those that be so blessed to make it into his kingdom, we will all be God. We will all have the dominion. We will reign with Christ, and who so be the be, who, who be so blessed to reign with Christ gonna reign with the Father as well. Verse verse three, know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Now, Revelation chapter two. Revelation chapter two, one verse here. Verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Whoa! Ain't that so? See, that's the dominion. <laughs> we God is setting things up so we can be back to where we were supposed to be from the get-go. <laughs> you know? But he said here. Yeah. And he that overcomes and keeping my works unto the end. Not saved by grace. You got to put in works. Everybody say they waiting on the Lord. The Lord waiting on us. <laughs> to do what he said do. Now. Now go to Matthew chapter 5. I'm almost done. So bear with me. Matthew chapter 5. And one verse here. Verse 5. Matthew 5 and 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Whoa. Ain't that something? Who is the meekest nation on this planet? We are. <laughs> That's right. We the, we the lowest of low on the planet. But we're going to inherit the earth. We're going to reign with Christ. We're going to judge the world. We're going to judge angels. We're going to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. That's a, that's a great thing. Can't, don't get no better than that. Now, Revelation 20. Turn to Revelation chapter 20. Beginning with verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Whoa. Ain't that something? But I'm going to read on. Verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Whoa. That's why we striving to make it to that first resurrection. This is the first resurrection. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Mm, see what I mean? On such the second death have no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Whoa! You feel me? <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Got to do right by God, not by man. Because if you keep doing right by man, you're going to end up in the lake of fire. Now, I'm going to read on. Verse 8. No, 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 no. Verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. 
verse 8, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to the battle, to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So after Satan release, he's going to go out and deceive again. <laughs> Ain't that something? Uh, verse, verse 9, and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Whoa. Ain't even going to be a fair fight. <laughs> you know, Satan know he's going to be destroyed, but he still wanted to sleep. Talk about reprobate mind. Whoa. <laughs> Satan has Satan influenced a lot of people with that reprobate mind, so you gotta, gotta watch out, gotta be careful. Now, go to Romans 13. Romans 13, one verse here. Verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. I went here because you got a lot of Sunday preachers. Teaching they keep teaching their congregation. We ain't got to keep that law no more. But what it say here? Love is the fulfilling of the law. What law? Whose law? God's laws. That's right. The only law that ended was a sacrificial law. It means no more animal sacrifices for your sins. And you can cater that to the Old Testament Hebrews because they <laughs> don't believe in Jesus. When Jesus came, he the sacrificial law ended. So you want to stay stuck in the Old Testament? Where's your animal sacrifices then? You're lying. <laughs> now, Matthew 22. Matthew chapter 22. And verse 37. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Mm. That's right. But we see a bunch of killing all the time. Ain't nobody loving they neighbor, but they're the same ones saying they love the Lord. Cool <laughs> Hypocrisy gone wild. Gone, gone wild. Uh, now, I'm going to read on. Let me see. What was that? That was verse 39, verse 40, verse 41. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, verse 42, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? Whoa, did I? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, no, that's another lesson. Okay, go back to the Old Testament. Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12, that's before you get to out of the book of Isaiah and Psalms of Solomon. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14. Verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Verse 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment. What? Every what? Every grace into judgment? No, every work into judgment. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. <laughs> judgment is coming. Now, go back to the New Testament. Go towards the book, of, go all the way towards Revelation. Go to 1 John chapter 5. And this will be last. I read to you in Romans, say, love is the fulfilling of the law. That's right. Because these, 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 these New Testaments, they all they want to think about is love. But what is love according to the word of God? I'm going to show you what love is according to the word of God. First John chapter 5, one verse here, verse 3. Well, this is the love of God. What? Pay attention. This is the love of God now. That we keep his commandments. That's the love of God. 
keep his commandments. So why is it a bunch of people in the world, billions of people not doing this? And they say they love the Lord. Especially us. Mm. <laughs> we want to get so religious, so high and mighty, you know, so holier than thou. Mm. Let me read it again, verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That means God's commandments are not hard to keep. You got a lot of people that say, hey, them, them laws too hard. There's too many of them. No, it's not. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. You know what I'm saying? Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Grace and peace multiply to you and yours and the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the most high God, the Savior, to those that keep his commandments. Wait, hold up. I want to show you a couple more things. And then I'm done. Nah. No. Come on now. Good plan. You see that? See, our people are waking up. You know what that is? That's Kendrick Lamar. Young rapper. And people of all ages listen to this brother. This brother found out he's an Israelite. You know what I'm saying? That is a beautiful thing. Israel, we got to get back on our job and wake up the people. <laughs> you know? Man, that's a beautiful thing, man. Praise Most High God.